Welcome to Tech Talks. Our security edition today is focused on malware triage with CrowdStrike and Splunk Phantom. Tech Talks is a series of short webinars that are deep dives for technical practitioners. We value you, our customer, and want you to continue in your Splunk journey. Our experts help create these best practices and we want you to leverage them in your daily role. I'm Olivia Courtney, a product marketing specialist, and I'm excited to share with you information about how you can use Splunk Phantom and CrowdStrike to triage malware. Today we're going to talk about why cloud native endpoint security platforms like CrowdStrike are a vital part of the security infrastructure. We'll cover how Splunk Phantom and CrowdStrike work together for a smooth operational flow from detecting behaviors and anomalies to operationalizing threat intelligence and automated response. You'll see a demo of an out-of-the-box playbook that you can set up in Phantom to triage malware detections from CrowdStrike and automate a variety of responses based on an informed decision by an analyst. We will then cover additional resources available to help you take advantage of Phantom capabilities within Splunk, and if you have any questions, please continue the conversation through the Tech Talk discussions in the Splunk community at splunk.com slash tech talk. Let's get started. As security teams navigate the movement to remote work and the transition to cloud hosted infrastructure, endpoint visibility remains a high priority for just about everyone. Whether we're monitoring a server in AWS or a remote employee's laptop, cloud-native endpoint security platforms like CrowdStrike remain a vital part of the infrastructure. Tools like CrowdStrike provide endpoint protection, threat intelligence, and response. However, the enhanced visibility and machine learning detections that come with a tool like CrowdStrike do have the potential to overwhelm our security operations centers with an overabundance of alerts. When these alerts pile up, analysts need a way to quickly gather more information related to the threat and then determine the risk level and respond immediately. And that's where Splunk comes in, and an automation and orchestration tool can save the day. Splunk Phantom is a SOAR tool that can orchestrate decisions and actions to more quickly investigate, triage, and respond to the high volume of alerts and reduce the manual burden of repetitive analysis. The combination of CrowdStrike and Splunk Phantom together allows for a smooth operational flow from detecting behaviors and anomalies that trigger alerts to operationalizing threat intelligence and automatically taking the first few response steps, all in a matter of seconds. I'm going to pass this over to my colleague, Phil Royer, to demonstrate an out-of-the-box playbook that you can set up in Phantom to triage malware detections from CrowdStrike and automate a variety of responses based on an informed decision by an analyst. This allows the analyst to skip the repetitive queries and jump into the investigation phase as soon as they see the alert. Take it away, Phil. Hi, this is Phil from Splunk. Today I've got a new community playbook called CrowdStrike Malware Triage. The goal of this playbook is to take an endpoint alert from CrowdStrike, which is an EDR tool, and to enrich it in Phantom, gather more information about the file hash and associated indicators, and then take a number of different responses. We can quarantine the device with this playbook. We can also update the indicator table in CrowdStrike, which is going to control the future policy if another endpoint alert is seen relying on the same file hash. So before we dig into how we use the playbook, I'm going to set up the Phantom instance so that we can use it. So if I come in, the first thing I need is to go to my playbooks and make sure I've synced up with the community. If you haven't done this in a while, you're going to get some new playbooks here. And either way, after you're done with it, you should see the CrowdStrike playbook in your list. So if you search for it and grab it here, you're going to see that it operates on the label CrowdStrike. So we're going to keep that in mind for later. And it uses one asset, which is CrowdStrike OAuth. It uses that asset many times, but we're just going to have to configure it once. So if we come back to the Phantom homepage and grab our apps, we can choose a CrowdStrike app from here, and we want to make sure we do the OAuth one. OAuth is the way it authenticates between Phantom and CrowdStrike. If you, if you want to call it CrowdStrike underscore OAuth, uh, then you won't have to change anything in the playbook, and you can just use it right as is. You're going to need three uh, IDs here, or secrets. 
um, you're going to need the client ID. The client secret. And then the app ID. So, so drop those in there. Make sure you set up the ingest settings to CrowdStrike. Or if you want to use another label, you can just change that and then change it in the playbook. Um, a normal polling interval might be ten, every 10 minutes for this to pull events from CrowdStrike. So just to make sure it's working, I like to hit test connectivity. Connectivity passed. Okay, good. So now we're ready to use the playbook. Since I use the same name here, the shortcut is to just Command R, refresh the playbook, and it should show that we have all the assets we need. And now we're ready to take a look at how the playbook works. So the first block is a decision, just to make sure we have a SHA-256 file hash coming out of CrowdStrike, which we typically will if it's a malware event. Next, we're going to filter to find the right artifact to look at. So there's going to be a handful of artifacts that are informational, and then the main one should have a label of event, which shows that it's going to have the system ID, the detection ID, and that we're only looking at the one artifact and not getting duplicates, which would show up later in the playbook. Based on that, we're going to pull the SHA-256 file hash out and use that as our main indicator uh, to do investigation in the playbook. And we're going to get indicator, which means checking in CrowdStrike against the indicator table to see if this is already a, a, a file hash that we've seen. And if so, what policy we applied last time we did that. So that action there, it's okay if it gets an error when it's first running. Um, the, the, action, the action actually errors out and says resource not found if it's a new file hash, but we still want to proceed with our playbook. So if it's resource not found, then we know we have a new hash. And otherwise, we're dealing with a known hash that already has an existing detection policy. This bottom one's a little simpler, so let's do that first. If the detection policy is none, we're just going to write a comment and close the event because it means that we decided in the past that we should have no detection policy associated with this hash. So it was probably a false positive or we've allow listed this hash for other reasons. Um, if you get it, if you do get a, an unexpected policy, I just added a comment there so the playbook shows that it, it, the playbook's not really equipped to handle that case, so you should change the playbook. But we don't expect that to happen. Next, we're going to see if the policy is detect. We're going to actually escalate the severity of the event in Phantom, and we're going to put a note in for the analyst to show everything we know about this event. So the host, the command line of the execution, the file hash, and a link over to CrowdStrike so they can see what happened. And then we're going to ask the analyst, do you want to quarantine the device? Block it off from the network, give you more time to investigate. Now back to that top path. If we had seen an indicator that we had not previously seen in the indicator table in CrowdStrike, we're going to do some more enrichment of it because we, let, we know less about it. Hunt file is going to show us all the other endpoints in CrowdStrike that have that file on disk. We're going to gather that list and then we're going to get system info about each of those. So take their device ID and turn it into more useful information like what operating system is it running on, what's the host name, some various other metadata like that. We're also going to list processes that are associated with that hash on the initial endpoint of the infection. So this might show if there's a scheduled task or a repeat behavior that's been happening over time, it'll just allow us to take a step back and correlate this activity with other related activity based on the file hash. For each process that we find, we're going to get process details about when it executed, what command line was used to, uh, to execute it, look for similarities here, try to trace back to how that file got there, what it's supposed to be doing, how frequently it runs, other information like that. We're going to boil all this information down into another prompt. Similar to the bottom code path, we're going to gather the essential information, but this time we're going to include the new information we got from get process details, get system info, and hunting the file. We're going to send this to an analyst and say, do you want to create an indicator? If so, do you want a policy of detect? 
or a policy of of none, which is ignore. And then secondarily, should we quarantine the endpoint right now for this investigation? After that, the code paths do pretty much what you'd expect. We format a, a detection, a, a, a policy and a description of the indicator that we're creating. And then we create that indicator, whether it's ignore or detect. And then of course we quarantine the device if they said yes, and we just do a comment if the analyst said no. So that's how the playbook works. So let's go into an event in Phantom and, and see it running all the way through. If we hop over to the analyst queue, we're going to see events coming in from multiple sources. We have CrowdStrike, Splunk, and probably some others. So this first one will be a good example. It's a next-gen antivirus alert on Windows host. So next-gen antivirus tells me it's, it's using machine learning. Um, so we might not know necessarily uh, why CrowdStrike detected this. We might need to gather some more details to figure out what to do in response. So I'm going to start with the prompt because this is where the playbook boiled down all the results from the, the enrichments it did and presents it to the analyst. So we have WinHost 280. It's running something called lasagna.exe out of the temp folder. And the only command line argument is browsers. So that's kind of funny. Um, we do have a link to the detection here. So I would pop that open in CrowdStrike. And here you can see the full process tree. Um, so it looks like runtime broker, scheduled PowerShell, um, and launched lasagna. Doesn't give us a whole lot of confidence in, in why this is malicious. Uh, it just says machine learning. Um, but I think if you do some open source intel and look at this file hash and at lasagna.exe, you'll see that, that, that that's actually a credential theft tool that's out on GitHub as an open source tool. So the other information we gathered was the process details and the system information. So I can see there's three executions of this executable in the past. They all have that same browser's command line. It turns out that that's a attacker tool command line for grabbing saved passwords from Mozilla Firefox or Google Chrome or, or one of your other browsers. We also have the system info of all these systems in our organization that also have this file hash on disk. It's a lonely list. There's just the one Windows host that we started with. So again, this is a rare piece of software that's only run on one machine. That increases the confidence that it is actually something anomalous. So if I come in and if I've done my research, I don't trust this. So I, I am going to detect and block it from now on uh, based on the file, the SHA-256 file hash. And I'm also going to quarantine this particular laptop um, so that we can continue to investigate on it without any outside connections. So if you remember, that's the end of the playbook. Uh, we used the prompt to gather some analyst input, and then the playbook ran through on that top code path. But the other possibilities were creating an indicator that does not have a detection policy, or none, and also, we could have just chosen not to quarantine the device. But in the future now, detections with this same file hash are going to be linked back to the initial uh, behavior that we saw here. And we're going to follow that default policy of block. Uh, and so there's going to be less decisions on the analyst because it's, it's a known indicator now in our, our CrowdStrike indicator list. So that's it for today. Thank you so much. Thanks, Phil. We're about ready to wrap up this Tech Talk, but before we do, I wanted to share some quick resources available to you to continue your journey. Check out our CrowdStrike Splunk app user and configuration guide for an overview on how to get started. Head over to Splunkbase and see our CrowdStrike apps for Splunk. And Phil's blog Splunk SOAR Playbooks CrowdStrike Malware Triage can be used as a quick reference guide for everything you saw today. Don't forget that we have an incredible community of Splunk users on our community site. You can search the Answers section on security. You can continue the conversation for this talk within the discussion section called Tech Talks at splunk.com slash tech talk, where you will find all additional resources. And finally, there's Splunk Ideas, where you can submit new product enhancements or vote for current ideas from other customers.
We really appreciate you taking the time out of your schedules to join us today. Please tune back in for future Tech Talks. We're excited to share this series with you.